we've got ourselves a Donnybrook potentially on our hands. Some fisticuffs, a good old throwdown in the AFC. Because out of nowhere, Sean Payton, who's the brand new head coach of the Denver Broncos, he was speaking with Jarrett Bell of USA Today and just decided to give his thoughts on what happened last year in Denver and potentially what could happen this year in New York with the New York Jets. So here are some of the quotes, some of the highlights from the interview. Quote, it doesn't happen often where an NFL team or organization gets embarrassed, Sean Payton said, and that happened here. Part of it was their fault relative to spending so much, bleeping time trying to win the offseason, the PR, the pomp and circumstance, marching people around, and all of that stuff. We're not doing any of that. The Jets did that this year. You watch Hard Knocks, all of it. I can see it coming. Remember when former Washington owner Dan Snyder put the dream team together? I was at the Giants in 2000. I was a young coach. I thought, how are we going to compete with them? Dion's there now. That team won eight games or whatever. So listen, just put the work in. Then when it came to specifically what happened to Russell Wilson and the team last year, Sean Payton went on to say, oh, man, there's so much dirt around that. There's 20 dirty hands for what was allowed, tolerated in the freaking training rooms, the meeting rooms, the offense. I don't know, Nathaniel Hackett. A lot of people had dirt on their hands. It wasn't just Russell. He didn't just flip. He still has it. This BS that he hit the wall, shoot, they couldn't get a play in. They were 29th in the league in pre-snap penalties on both sides of the ball. And then he went on to talk about Wilson. That wasn't his fault. That was the parents who allowed it in letting all his you know, people in the building and all the other stuff that went along with it. That's not an uh, incrimination in him, but an incrimination on the head coach, the GM, the president, and everybody else who watched it all happen. Now, a quarterback having an office, office and a place to watch film is normal, but all those things get magnified when you're losing and all that stuff. I've never heard of it. We're not doing any of that. Everything I've heard about last season, we're doing the opposite opposite they can only beat the bleep out of you so much but everybody's got a little stink on their hands it's not just russell wilson it was the poor offensive line it may have been one of the worst coaching jobs in nfl history that's how bad it was sean payton from the top rope out of nowhere i mean my goodness (laughs) yes um let's just start off with the obvious there there's truth to to what he's saying okay i mean I, I, for all of us who watched it, it was an offense that you're going there's no rhythm no flow it didn't seem like they could function they had a hard time getting plays in there was the whole wristband remember that whole uh, debacle oh, yeah and everyone made a big deal about it i mean that was part of it. it it highlights so many things football is not as easy and as simple as sometimes we make it out to be You know, there's a lot of intricacies to learning a new offense, you know, trying to be a first time head coach, putting it all together while also calling plays. There's there's so many difficulties to it, but it was a disaster in Denver last year. It it really was compared to what they had before, where you feel like they're on the brink, they're a quarterback away and then you get that quarterback. But now you have a first time head, head coach and it seemed like it was all it just a disaster. I mean, even the the game management with timeouts and so forth, and different situational awareness. And, and remember, they hired, was it Jerry Rosberg that they brought in yeah. during the season? Yeah. And it's like, well, maybe that was something you wouldn't have before the season's figured out, you know, when you're a head coach. So uh, there's a lot of truth to what Sean Payton's saying. Now, he's doing it in a way, though, that doesn't completely tarnish the relationship he has with, with Russell Wilson. But what it does is it puts Russell Wilson in a spot where, no, 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 you're the player. You having this entire staff that's in our facility that's blurring the lines between who the Broncos trainers are, who the Broncos strength coaches are, who the Broncos quarterback coach and coaches are, that's not going to happen. This is, this is the Broncos. You're the quarterback of our team. And, you know, you, as far as the office to watch film and all that, it's called the quarterback room. I don't care if, if you're a Hall of Famer or not. Like, that's, that's where every quarterback goes and they consider that their office, their space, when you, especially when you're the starter. You don't need a separate wing or, or, or portion of the facility, especially upstairs with the coaches and front office execs and all that. So it's, it's Sean Payton basically saying, like, look, I've won a Super Bowl. 
I'm a good coach. I know what I'm doing. None of this stuff that they, that they were doing last year was focused on winning. And we're cutting out all the crap, and we're getting back to trying to win football games, which is what allows you to be successful, be a Hall of Fame player, and everything else that comes along with that. You know, for me, I, I watched the movie um, that was based off of Sean Payton getting suspended um, after Bounty Gate took place. And, you know, who was the actor that played Sean Payton? Was that uh, I forget his mall name. cop guy? What's his name? Yeah. Paul Blart. Yeah. What's yeah. that guy's Paul name? Paul Blart. There we go. Paul Blart. Um, and and yeah. you Kevin know, James. Kevin James. Yeah. Kevin James. There we go. I. I took away something from that movie. They they based it off of. What did you take away? Loosely based it off of the true story of Sean Payton coming back and coaching, and it was a broken team that his son was playing on. It was a team that was celebrating if they scored a touchdown. It was a team that was more, you know, more more focused in on other things, and but they were a team that wanted to win. And and I looked at the Denver Broncos, and I'm like, you know, that's what the Denver Broncos were last year. They were a team that wanted to win, but they were a team that got to a point of where, well, if there was the proper play call that that came in, that was a win. If Russell Wilson just went and talked to the offensive coordinator or studied some film on his uh, surface instead of telling people on the sideline to holler out run or pass – um, you know, things things might have been a little better. And, and I took away from that movie that when Sean Payton started helping coach the team, it was his ability to just, like, kind of decipher what was taking place with the other team, what was taking place with the opportunity, and his connection to the players and their belief in what it was that was taking place. And then boom, all of a sudden, not the next season, but the season that they were in, those, those little boys started playing some, some really, really good football. I think, I think Sean Payton, I don't know him very much, but my interactions with him and my observations of him and how he handles his players how he handles his business as a coach and how he has communicated, I think is, is ultimately why he's had so much success as a coach. And so to me, he is raising a standard, but he's also letting them know that he believes that this is a team that, that can accomplish at a high level and that they need to believe in that and not, not for one second think that, the outside world blaming them for what it is. Like, okay, be accountable as offensive lineman. You aren't good, be better this year. It wasn't all on Russ, but he was a little dirty. You know, it wasn't all on on the – well, he did kind of put it all on the coaching staff. But I, I just <laughs> I just think that he, he did kind of put it all on the coaching staff. But, but to me, I just think that looking at now where they're at, it's going to be the team – it's going to be – the people that believe the most in what he subscribes to and what he's bringing, that's going to make the difference in terms of if they have success this year or not. Now, Robert Sala was told about the comments from Sean Payton, and uh, Robert Sala had this to say at Jets training camp about those comments. Well, I'm not going to acknowledge Sean on that. Is he? You know, he's been in the league a while. He can say whatever the hell he wants. But, uh, but as far as you know, what we have going on here, I kind of live by saying, if you ain't got no haters, you ain't popping. So hate away. Obviously, we're doing something right. If you got to talk about us when we don't play you till week four, and I'm good with it. You know, the guys in our locker room, they they've earned everything that's coming to them, and really excited about what's going on. I think Hackett's doing a phenomenal job here. Him, the uh, coaching staff is doing a phenomenal job, and and we're focused on us. I get it. There's a lot of external noise. There's a lot of people who are hating on us. There's a lot of people looking for us to fail. There's a lot of crows pecking at our neck. But all you can do is spread your wings, keep flying high until those crows fall off and suffocate from the inability to breathe. It's a whole other analogy I'll get into later. But uh, really, really excited about the group we have, the coaching that's going on. And uh, But I'm going to keep our focus on us and making sure that we're prepared every single day to do the best we can and uh, learn from our past and grow with, grow with every, every moment that we have. I mean, can't the NFL just flex yeah, a little mean, bit and, and put that game week one? All right, nobody hey, gives a riff hey, about Broncos Raiders. Hey Q, Come on. AQ hey jo- yeah. hey and Jonas, um, did did the Jets 
play in the Super Bowl last year? <laughs> he's, he's defending his guy. I'm with Robert Sala. Guy's got seven uh, okay. kids. He's got okay. enough I, going I on. was a tad bit confused by the way he – like his tone was like uh, if you're not – pop or you're no, no haters you're not popping yeah he stole that from me what uh did well, the jets even play in the playoffs last year but but let's add some context to this because this is what happens this is the slippery slope all right that happens in journalism and and, and and sports radio okay sean payton made reference in the interview to the fact that when a, when a team is in in the press a lot winning the offseason a lot right and the thing about the Jets that's interesting is, like, I don't think they've necessarily done anything. Um, they, they, like, they got chosen by Hard Knocks, right? It wasn't like they chose to be on Hard Knocks. Yeah. In fact, like, there was an article about how, hey, Hard Knocks could be a little different this year, right? I mean, they, literally, Robert Sulla had to wear a T-shirt that says, I heart Hard Knocks, because there was this perception that the Jets were going to, like, kind of dumb down or, or take away from what was Hard Knocks because – they wouldn't allow them as much access to players being cut and some of the other things that have made for good TV in the past. But they didn't choose Hard Knocks. Hard Knocks chose them. And so like that's one of those things where I think they've been more in the public eye for that. They've obviously been more in the public eye because of getting Aaron Rodgers. That's arguably the, one of the biggest offseason pieces that we've had. Maybe the biggest, yeah. depending on who you talk to. And, and, and that was more born out of, like, they're trying to win a Super Bowl. So a lot of attention comes along with a figure who's a future Hall of Famer, a figure who could be considered polarizing to some people. And so it, it, it's a little odd, like, and, and now Dalvin Cook's there in New York visiting. He could sign with the team, and he's a, he's a really good player. You know, he's, he's a Pro Bowl caliber player. So, you know, they're, they're, a lot of things are happening for the Jets. I, all, I think they're all good things. I don't know that they're purposefully bringing this all on, like they're trying to win the offseason. I think it's just a byproduct of like the things that are kind of happening and what's around them, so there's naturally going to be a lot of attention to it. So that was one of the things that Sean Payton kind of talked about where I was like, well, I, I don't know that they're trying to win the offseason. They're just trying to win the Super Bowl. And so they, they upgraded a quarterback. They've tried to load up their, their roster, which is when any talented players as possible. Because how is, how is it any different from Russell Wilson joining the Broncos? It's really not. There's a lot of tension around it. Now, the Broncos and, and maybe Russell Wilson himself personally fed into that. Yeah. But, like, I, I don't know that Aaron Rodgers is necessarily feeding into the stuff. Like, he, yeah, he's gone to some different events, right, a Taylor Swift concert or whatever else. And you're in New York, so you're going to be publicized. But I, I don't know that the Jets are, like, outwardly trying to, you know, be distracted by their own, you know, media and everything else that's going on with it. Um, but the last thing I'll say, and I'll ask you guys this, is is Nathaniel Hackett an OC in New York or anywhere else for that matter this year if Aaron Rodgers isn't the quarterback? No. And that's, that's, I agree. I think, that's where I think the tough thing is for, for them to answer is them hiring Nathaniel Hackett. And, and look, he's qualified to be an OC. He, he's, he's, you know, he's qualified to be a coach in the NFL. But off what happened last year, and now he's with the Jets. It had, to me, everything to do with wooing Aaron Rodgers to come to New York. And that being – I mean, he was there, a, a part of the, the, the crew that went out to recruit Aaron Rodgers to want to go to the Jets. He was on that flight. Usually it's a head coach, owner, front office executive, general manager, for example. Not, not the OC. But he was a part of that group because of his personal relationship with Aaron Rodgers. So I, I do think that's the pink elephant in the room that you have to acknowledge is – Nathaniel Hackett's probably not there as the ROC if Aaron Rodgers isn't there as the quarterback. And by the way, it wasn't like, you know, Sean Payton took out just Nathaniel Hackett. Uh, he took out uh, George Payton. Uh, he took out the president. They're still there, uh, from my understanding. They're still in Denver. So he made sure to criticize them that they also had dirt on their hands with the way that everything happened last year. He just, I mean, and, and maybe he was having a cocktail, you know? And, I, I, I don't, I don't want to say it, but I feel like... Um, there was some collateral damage there, you know, like <laughs> it's still in the building. I, I do that sometimes. I feel bad doing it sometimes, but like, and Jonas probably knows this. He's probably like, yeah, 
that's that's happened before you know i mean look uh you got you got to let people know and now we get a now how do you think that if this if there's no back and forth or no hey you know i got out of the line there like how do you think that pre or post game handshake is going to go in denver in october for week five it's gonna be a strong one dude i mean first off saul has been hitting the weights you can tell he's all yoked up uh peyton's got a bully mentality He's, if oh, you check the rounds, whoa. he's been hitting something else there on social media. So, <laughs> oh. he, and I'm just telling you right now, that's going to be one strong handshake where they like grab and embrace each other, and Salah's going to whisper something in his ear, <laughs> depending on how the outcome of the game goes. Uh, it's so good, Sean man. Sean Payton ain't no sucker, though. I tell you that he will. No, hey, man, he's got. He might be great, a better trash talker than great him. Lung capacity. Yeah, he does. Yes, uh, he does. I mean, and right. and he's in the right place for it.